Hello, Property Nomads. Hope you're doing well. You probably have heard us go on and on about gold, about silver, and about protecting yourself for the future. Now, today's article is quite an interesting one because it's created a little bit of an uproar depending on which country you're from. And that is purely because uh, Colombia is laying claim to the holy grail of shipwrecks. Let's head across to the article and let's see what we're talking about. And there's going to be a reason why they're doing this. So, Colombia begins exploring the holy grail of shipwrecks. You might be asking yourself, well, what is that? It's a Spanish galleon. Okay, doesn't sound interesting, but here's why this is actually quite fascinating. So the San Jose Galleon was sunk by the British Royal Navy in 1708 in the Caribbean Sea. Now, if you're not overly familiar with your um, history of this part of the world, uh, you would have had the uh, discovery or rediscovery of the Americas in 1492 by Christopher Columbus. I'm just going by you know popular history as you know, we would understand it. And that began a uh, Spanish conquest era. And as mines were discovered, whether it would be gold mines, silver mines, etc., cetera, uh, the Spanish pretty much flooded the European market with uh, what, what they would have called pieces of eight, so very recognisable silver coins. Now, of course, that trade was quite lucrative for a lot of different reasons. And at the time, other naval superpowers, to an extent France, but more so Britain, are not very happy with the Spanish monopoly in that part of the world. So they would have gone around um, hunting down the ships, especially the ships that were transporting uh, the gold, the wealth, the gold and the silver back to Spain. So that would explain why in Colombia, why a ship from the British Royal Navy would have sunk a Spanish galleon. So again, the San Jose galleon. Now, the key thing here is that the ship is just outside of the Colombian city of Cartagena. It's just outside of there. So whose waters that in? I don't know. This is why Colombia and Spain uh, and others are going to be arguing about it. But here's a kicker. It is estimated to be laden with as much as £16 billion, approximately $20 billion worth of treasure. Now you can see why there might be ongoing arguments here with this holy grail of shipwrecks. If we look at everything that's happened in the last few years, if you look at gold prices, where they've come from, where they're likely to go, we don't make predictions here. People we listen to say it could be, you know, two, two and a half, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand dollars $3,000, Even if you have a, a recounting of gold uh, in order to peg the dollar against the gold, that could raise gold as high potentially as, as $25,000, $27,000 an ounce. That's quite an extortionate sum. And that's for one ounce. So when you get to a the Holy Grail of shipwrecks, which could have, as at the time of recording, up to potentially $20 billion worth of treasure, you would imagine most of it would be gold and most of it will be silver. You're going to create a a bit of an uproar with that. Why wouldn't you? That, that's worth fighting over. Um, I might even go and lay claim to the San Jose Galleon because why not? That is a lot of cash, a lot of treasure to be had on a ship. So I do wonder with all of this, okay, arguably so, if gold wasn't worth as much as it was today and given how useful $20 billion would be to, I would imagine, most people around the world. This probably isn't such a big story uh, if we're in different economic times. But because of where we are and what's going on at the moment, the fact that this has come to the furor, uh, I, I just find it fascinating. Uh, and again, it all goes down to $20 billion worth of treasure. 
Now, if that is predominantly gold and silver, then you imagine that the value of that treasure uh, is hmm, probably going to go up quite considerably. So the article then just goes on about uh, different uh, aspects of the uh, of the of the sink. And let's actually have a look, quick look at the four photos that the wonderful friends at the BBC have provided. So a bit of surveying going on. You can see there's potentially some porcelain cups as well. Fantastic. Uh, love the fact that the marine scientific vessel is called the Simon Bolivar. Uh, the one of the liberators or libertadors of that part of the world, and uh, what looks to be a, a crab. Anyway, interesting stuff. Um, that's going to create a lot of arguments over over that in the future. Again, uh, Colombia made the discovery in two thousand and fifteen, but again, it's subject to long-standing legal disputes over who owns the contents of the ship. So there's a US salvage company uh, who are laying claim to it. The Colombian government, quite rightly, because it's in their territories, are laying claim to it. Uh, and of course, Spain uh, is the other country laying claim to it. Now, I'm not an international court person, so I'm not going to get involved in that. I'm not surprised that the US want to get involved in that. Then again, I, they could probably print 20 billion um, of treasure in probably about five months, the way that they're going at the moment. But yeah, just an interesting, uh, interesting story, and really want to bring to your attention because number one, that treasure is going to be worth quite a lot. But secondly, I wonder if this was wouldn't have been such a big story if we were in different economic times where gold wasn't worth as much, or none of this material could be as worth as much as it potentially is. Let's watch this space. I'm sure that'll. Um, escalate quite quickly uh, as and when they get round to uh, finding everything that is potentially on board uh, the holy grail of shipwrecks. That's the San Jose Galleon, which uh, got sunk in 1708 by the Royal Navy, just outside the Colombian port city of Cartagena. If you're ever in that part of the world, Cartagena is a, a fascinating place, well worth visiting. Uh, I can be a bit of a toe dipper getting into bodies of water, but even when I went there years ago, uh, the sea was that hot uh, that I wouldn't get in because it was too hot. Uh, I guess uh, we'd love to have that problem here in the UK. Just a small favour to ask. Uh, please do subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also subscribe to the podcast. Uh, leave us a comment below and tell everyone else about the show. That would be absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much. and See you in the next video.